Y'all, a judge has been called out for texting nonstop during an atrocious trial. She was calling out and reading out everybody in text messages in that courtroom from jurors to super hot cops, apparently. We're gonna talk about that and cook in today's video. Hello, Sofa Squad, and welcome back to the sofa. Y'all, Sofa ain't here. In fact, pa where is Paul? You might be asking. Well, I'll tell you, just settle down. Y'all, I took a quick trip to the mountains of North Carolina to see the fall leaves. And I'm trying to be on brand with this shirt, you know, work with me. And so I'm in a little cabin in the mountains in the middle of nowhere. It might get scary up in here. I don't know. But I brought my HelloFresh stuff with me so I could prepare some meals for my time here. And I'm actually going to be cooking those, one of them at least, during this video. Now, what we're going to be talking about today in the video is, like I said, that judge who was texting like 500 texts during this trial. Y'all, it was next level what she was doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to, by default, talk about the actual case that was, you know, taking place in the courtroom. And we're also going to talk about what's going on with the judge. Last I checked, and depends on when you see this, she had been temporarily suspended. So we'll see, but I definitely had some opinions. Now this is a little bit of a different video. I am going to be cooking my entire HelloFresh meal throughout this. This video is obviously sponsored by HelloFresh. If you don't follow me or if you do whatever, then you know I've worked with them for a long time and I absolutely love them for exact reasons like this, right? So what I want to do is this, is I'm going to tell you what they're offering up this month for the Sofa Squad. And then we're going to get into the video and like I said we're gonna be cooking throughout if you like this format because a lot of you have asked me to do this and so I was like this is the perfect time to do it because I want to do basically some meal prep the first day I get here and I was like what better chance to sit here relax different setting talk about a case and meal prep and go on so let me know in the comments if you like this or if you're like I like it Paul but uh yeah you don't know how to cook and on that note as I always like to say y'all know all the opinions I do here y'all they ain't fancy they ain't credential I ain't no doctor I ain't no lawyer. They're just my opinions. But also, y'all, I ain't no cook either, okay? So y'all might be like, why is he using that tool to store stuff? Why is he doing that? It's just because I don't know better. But I have seriously learned a lot more with HelloFresh. I'm being totally honest with that. So just, you know, keep it in mind, I ain't no cook. I ain't no lawyer. And then that fancy stuff all around. Okay. So with that being said, let's hear what they're offering and then let's jump into the case. Y'all, it's my favorite season, fall, and HelloFresh is helping kick it off with some amazing meals. Let's talk about it. If you follow me for a while, then number one, you know I'm all about some HelloFresh. I've been partnering with them for quite some time. Everything about them I love. As you see, this week I am in another town. I'm in the mountains. They make it so easy to have your box shipped anywhere. And then literally, y'all, the day that I got here to the mountains, I had the recipes here. Here, these very fallish ones you're gonna see me cook one of them today it was such a vibe it just completely matched with the area it's easy to cook i mean and trust me when you see how i cook i mean if i can do it anybody can they really helped me get out of my dinner time recipe rut and keep things fresh and like i said a lot of times their meals match the season and just give you those ooey gooey yummy vibes there's many in-season ingredients. Produce travels from the farm to your door for peak ripeness that you can taste. One thing I like about them is they do all the shopping, they do all the meal planning, and literally the ingredients, they come to your doorstep, it's super easy. But then also the picture, like I need a picture book to be able to cook, okay? And HelloFresh does that. And I'm all about their quick and easy options and they're even their 15 minute meals, you can't beat it. Now look, with it being my favorite season, you can go to the HelloFresh market. They have amazing add-ons that align themselves with the fall flavors lineup. You can feast on desserts like apple cider cheesecake with caramel sauce, y'all. Or you can please your friends with appetizers like the barbecue pulled pork nachos and the mini pumpkin cheesecake. Y'all, it is all about fall and I'm here for it. So y'all, don't wait. Get in the fall vibe with me and HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com. Use code reporting live from my sofa 16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Look, the offer is for new subscriptions only and varies by plan a across nine boxes. That's code reporting live from my sofa 16 at hellofresh.com for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Visit the link in the description box below. Okay, so let's dive in. Now, a couple of
of things. First of all, we're going to do some backstory here. First of all, backstory, what are we even making tonight? Okay. So the meal, as you saw the little spot there, this is sweet chili beef and green bean balls. Looks amazing. Very foul. Very foul. Okay. So that's what it is right there. The steps are on the back. So if you look at me, look, you see me looking at something, it's what I'm doing. Okay. I have to read it to tell how to boil the water and everything. Now also, you can't really see it, but my notes and the camera or the camera, no, camera's right there. Computer's right here. It's got my notes. That's what I'm looking at. I ain't trying to be rude. So that being said, let's get started. So first of all, what I'm going to do is just get these green beans ready. So I'm just going to be slicing this up while we talk. Okay. So like I said, a judge was recently called texting and I'm talking literally all red and did, okay? Like, to the point that I'm like, girl, we say it about the criminals all the time. I'm like, don't you know that you're on video? When you see the video footage, you're gonna be like, girlfriend, why would you even think to do this, right? I'm talking, it's bad. Anyways, so... We're gonna be reviewing that, but before we get to that, you have to talk about the case because that makes it that much more like you weren't paying attention during it. What? You know. Now, before we want to say anything and get into it, look, I know that this is gonna be like a, a more like a, I just I don't want to look at my phone. I get y'all. I get it. It's technology. We're glued to our phones. I have a different expectation for a judge on the bench, and I get that they might need to look at their phone. They're a human being too. This is over the top, okay? This is insane is what it is. So I just wanna say that because I don't wanna sound like I'm trying to be some moral superiority complex type thing here. You know what I'm saying? And being like, oh, I would never do that. I would never look at my phone. I mean, trust me, I would, but not to this degree. So that being said, while doing something like this, you know what I mean? And not this cooking, I mean, good Lord, I got the stuff going. I'm talking about while judging the case. Lord, anyways, okay. Let's talk about the actual case and what we're going to do, like we always do if you're new here. We look at video clips, we look at newspaper clips, we do all that kind of stuff. Okay. So, that being said, I'm going to read a couple of clips here, and they'll be on the screen, and just you can pause to read or read along with me, and that's what we're going to do. Okay, so, it says here, a mother and her boyfriend have been arrested for taking the life of a two-year-old baby in Lincoln County. So, two-year-old baby, keep this in mind, y'all, as we look at this, okay. Judith Dinker, 19, and Christian Tyler Martzel, 27, have been arrested this week in Lincoln County after investigators said they said Dinker and her boyfriend had been abusing two-year-old Braxton Dinker for the past several months. The baby died Sunday night at Edmund Integris from severe head trauma, according to state officials. Dinker called 911 moments earlier as she tried to rush him to the hospital. Okay, so that's the basics, and we're going to do another page here in a second that goes a little bit more into it, because I don't know, I don't think I picked any of the 911 phone call because it's traumatizing y'all. I don't like 911 phone calls. I get they can be interesting and yes, I will listen to them, but I also find them incredibly anxiety inducing and especially when they involve little kids like this, it's just even though the people calling 911 were the people who, you know, had a hand in doing this to the child, nonetheless, it's still jarring. So that being said, we're not going to be listening to those. So let's go into the next little clip right here. Okay, so neighbors say they thought that the property was vacant and this is quoting, they say, I still can't hardly believe it. If I had known any Anything like that happened, I would have intervened or tried to, but I didn't know they lived there, Lori Dillon, who lives across the street, said. I don't know. It's hard for me because I'm a grandma. I don't understand it. And that's one thing you'll see in cases like this as well, when people who have children or no children or, you know, pretty much anybody is just like, what? You did what to this child? It's very hard. Okay, so this is court document state deputy on a belt used to hit the child inside the home. It was also reported that Bryson had not seen a doctor in about a year. Can you imagine? This is a two-year-old, y'all. Especially with some of the things that they report was, you know, done to him. This is assistant DA Adam Panter said in his 10 years practicing law, this is the worst abuse and neglect he's ever seen. Numerous, numerous open wounds, very large open wounds, one possibly gangrene had already set in, Panter said. Panter said there was a DHS investigation but the report was not complete again that's a whole other video my thoughts about that we see this time and time again it's very frustrating uh, i says criminal investigators will continue to find out if others saw the abuse and failed to report it to law enforcement panther said braxton's death was completely preventable so as we see oftentimes in these cases you know i mean it is they're completely preventable right so there's the backstory let's listen to a couple of video clips now about that part of it and we'll talk about them after they play heard and her boyfriend are expected to be charged with first-degree murder. Investigators tell Arbani Campo the woman's two-year-old son had been abused for months before he died. 
She joins us live now from Edmond tonight. Bonnie Braxton passed away. Investigators say his body badly bruised and caught the attention of medics. Bruising all over the body. We have broken bones to the body. Deputies searched the home where his mother and 27-year-old Christian Tyler Martzall had been living. Neighbors say they thought the property was vacant. There was no running water. I still can't hardly believe it. I mean, if I had known anything like that had happened, I would have intervened or tried to, but I didn't know they lived there. Okay, so a lot of that's like confirming the information that we had read in the thing, but I wanted to kind of hear it from the horse's mouth type thing. So again, no running water. People were surprised they lived there. You know, other people would report seeing abuse taking place in the front yard. All around it is not good. Now, again, this is just to paint the picture of what type case we're dealing with. Because a lot of times, like, when you hear stuff like this of a judge doing something like this, it's like, you know, what was it, like a jaywalking case? Not that that changes anything, right? But when you hear the severity of this, like we just did, and then you see the evidence we're about to see of what this judge was doing, literal, your mouth is on the floor. Okay, so y'all, we've got the green beans cut up the way I want to. Now I'm going to also dice up, and what does it say here? Of course, I don't have my glasses. Wash and dry produce. Trim green beans. Yeah, did that. Yep, yep, yep. Quarter the lime and pick the cilantro leaves from some of the chopped roughly chopped leaves. Ugh, Lord, that's entailed. Oh, my God. Some of the stuff gets really complicated, y'all. I mean, it's in the scheme of things, it's easy, but... And here's the thing, too. For me, personally, this is one thing I do like about HelloFresh. You can basically make the stuff how you want to, right? I'm not big into cilantro, so I just do a little bit of it. I don't need a ton of it. Now, it wants me to put these in a microwave-safe dish. And I didn't count on being somewhere new. I brought a bunch of stuff with me, but I didn't count on being somewhere new. So I'm using this as mine. I know it looks weird, but I don't want to use their nice looking stuff here. So we're not going to. Anyways, let's put this in here. Okay. Now let's get that cilantro and let's go into the next thing with the case. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just pick this off and then chop it up. And I'm like, oh my God, thank God I don't like it, right? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, there's so many leaves. But that's good and bad, I guess. So anyways, let's keep talking about this couple here. So on the screen, you're going to see her picture, right? So Judith Dinker. Now she, we're going to get to the sentences because that's a whole other thing that you're going to be like, oh, what? Because again, the wheels of justice are very interesting in how they turn. But she's going to be behind bars for quite quite some time. Now, her boyfriend, on the other hand, and let's get to his little picture, uh, there he is, real nice looking fellow, right? And he, on the other hand, got a much sweeter deal out of this, and you'll hear why in a few minutes. But again, this is the part that I'm just like, are you kidding me? And side note, I am completely aware, if you're watching this, that you can, I'm wearing camouflage gym shorts with this. It's just how I roll. I don't know if y'all think that I dress up fancy for the videos, but in this one, you're probably seeing all of me. And this is what I wear. I wear gym shorts for the most part. Ah, uh, so that's it. Now, for me right here, this is like enough cilantro for me, right? I don't want a hardcore taste of it. And two, I'm lazy. I mean, let's be honest. So I'm just going to mince this. Now, let's talk about the boyfriend a little bit more in depth here. A man has been arrested after a Lincoln County woman was arrested in connection with the death of her two-year-old child. Christian Tyler Martzell was arrested Tuesday night in connection with the death of Braxton Danker. Martzell was dating Braxton's mother, Judith Danker. Danker 19 was arrested after Braxton died Sunday when he suffered cardiac arrest from an infection that started as a diaper rash. Now this is what they were talking about when they are like, this was completely avoidable. This is what they mean. I mean, there is no reason. I mean, this is ridiculous that this child died from this, right? Let's continue. It says Lincoln County officials said the child suffered injuries to his buttocks, broken bones, open wounds, and appeared to be beaten with an object. It appears the abuse spanned months, investigators said. Both Marcel and Danker are facing first degree murder complaints. Now, this is getting a little bit more into like what actually the kind of charges they got. And this is like, you know, remember back when, you know, he was first, she got arrested, then he got arrested. Uh, so this is like back then. This has already been resolved is what I'm getting at. Now look, I don't know if I'm doing this wrong. I'm just gonna pick him apart. Oh my God. This is what I mean when I'm not a cook, y'all. I mean, it did get him apart a little bit, but it's just, I'm finishing the job. Just work with me, good Lord. Now also y'all might be like, where's Roscoe? Well, he's not. Roscoe is, he's just so old now. It, it's a lot for him to travel. And y'all, I'm not gonna lie where I'm staying. When I say I was in full-blown anxiety attack when I got here, because the line, the road to get here is so narrow and so confusing. Almost. 
Where are my riches? Okay, let's keep talking. Okay, now next we're gonna be cutting the lime up. Okay, now I can get behind ingredients like this. In fact, well, you need more limes in this damn thing, Lord. I mean, you just go a few times like this, right? Now, on to the case at hand, the judge. We need to talk about, before we get into all that, let's, well, let's meet Tracy. That's her name, Tracy. Let's go on meet her. I did a little screenshot here. We'll talk about it. Okay, so here we have Tracy Soderstrom, district judge, constitutional advocate, small business owner and rancher, and a veteran. So she is up for some kind of election. We'll see how that goes. She's endorsed by both county sheriffs. Vote November 8th. I'm curious to see how this goes. She's committed to zealously following the law. I have built a small business based on compassion and serving others. In the military, I learned the values of service. Now my mission is to serve you as the next district judge with competence, uh -huh. experience, and ardent defense of the rule of law. Tracy. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, girl. Let's, let's keep looking. Meet Tracy. Veteran. Following in the fo footsteps of her father and grandfather, Tracy joined the Oklahoma National Guard at the age of 17, vowing to defend our Constitution. I am glad for her service, and I do appreciate that. Uh, she's compassionate. She's experienced. She's a loving mother and grandmother. And I'm sure she is all these things. I mean, you can be multiple things at one time, you know, but we just have to keep things in check when we have people's lives and freedom uh, on the line. And more than that, also justice for a case like this that we're talking about about uh, because you know it's just it's it's not good <laughs> when you're not paying attention what if she was needed right you know what I'm saying like to do something so anyway you can volunteer to work with her you can give her money you can do all that now again it almost makes you wonder if part of this was like say she has somebody that's like running against her and they got wind of this and we're like let's use this as like the way to take her down now she they didn't she didn't need any help right she was doing just fine taking herself down with this kind of footage out there okay so i'll just say that but anyways that's tracy so just to give you an idea she is you know running and all this kind of stuff so let's get a little deeper into what happened okay y'all so we had to move the set the location the locale because now it's time to do some cooking okay first of all i've got my little thing here you can see it they're a little easy to read thingamajig so we're getting ready to do this part but before we do you're going to see some stuff on the screen so let's get into like what the judge was doing right now well, the first thing we're going to do, first of all, is, well, bowl some rice, okay? So, you know, I should be able to handle that, but we'll see. Now, on the screen, you're going to see this. It says, judge called on phone during toddler's murder trial, sent 500 texts, called dead boy's mom, liar, liar. Now, y'all, now here's the thing. I'm not trying to defend the mom in this, right? I'm just talking about a code of professionalism. I mean, and if we were there listening, we might be thinking it too. I mean, who knows, right? Because at the end of the day, the, the mom and the dad are both the reasoning and why this young boy lost his life so early, right? But nonetheless, the judge doesn't need to be on here talking to like the bailiff and stuff like that, saying this stuff. Anyways, so there's that. Let's go on to a clip real quick while I get some of this ready. Okay, so first of all, we gotta bowl this rice before we do this little clip that we're gonna listen to to get some of the tea on who this person is and how it went down. Um, So they want a measuring cup and I have this like some archaic cooking device. It's got all the numbers on the same thing. We're just gonna fill it up with what we think. Anyways, let's roll the clip. An Oklahoma judge could be removed from office after video shows her texting her bailiff nonstop during a trial. Her name is Judge Tracy Soderstrom. She sent more than 500 texts during the trial of a man accused of beating a two-year-old to death. Murder case. Court records reveal she laughed about a prosecutor's genitals wondered whether a juror was wearing a wig and drooled over a quote pretty police officer testifying on the stand well she sounds like a real winner can't wait to see how the election goes now on to this real quick y'all these numbers here are so messed up it says one here it says two and a half one fourth y'all but I mean, you already know we ain't professional like this up in here. We don't have calculators right now. We're just going to wing it. We're going to fill it up once for two, and then we'll do one third, and then we'll bowl it. If we burn the water, we burn the water, okay? But now on to this. So you heard the tea there, right? And I mean, I hate to even call it tea, but you heard what it was about. It's the audacity for me, number one. But number two... The thing she was saying, talking about how pretty, and it was a guy cop, I believe, regardless, like talking about how like hot he is or whatever pretty, you know what I mean? I'm just like, why would you do that? And when you see, and you've seen some of it, how the cameras are positioned on her thing, I mean, I, 
I'm sure she just wasn't thinking, but it's like, and you're going to watch in a minute. I'll, I've got some B footage that they'll put up and whatnot of, I mean, like the, you're hearing the mother on the stand and she's just over here texting. And I'm like, why aren't you listening to this? That's the shocking part. I, just out of simple, it, obviously for justice and the law, right? But then uh, uh, for, for respect, I mean, this is a two-year-old we're talking about and you're over here talking about how hot the cop is. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, come on. Please, God, don't let it blow up. It's not my stuff. Oh my God. I usually don't, like if I'm standing somewhere, I don't like to use their stuff. Because it just, wait, I don't trust it. Oh God, we need salt. Okay, they have some. Lord, I didn't think about all this. Oh my God. Now, I don't know how y'all do your thing. I mean, there's barely anything. I like putting some in before. And you know, some of them on the way. Now, let's see what they want us to do next. We're going to do this. We're going to get that going. 15, 18, got it. He had a drizzle. Oh my God, we don't have any. We don't have any uh, oil. Okay, so while this water is getting ready to boil and all that, we don't want to watch the pot because it'll never boil. We're going to look at some stuff on the screen here, okay, and get a little bit more in-depth of it. So on here, you're going to see it says an Oklahoma judge caught playing with her phone as a mother sobbed about the murder of her child faces a formal push to remove her from the bench after it emerged she sent 500 texts to her bailiff to her bailiff including some ridiculing the prosecutors and calling the dead toddler's mom liar liar i mean if there was a reason for can't roll my eyes hard enough it's this right here let's keep going so it says the chief justice of oklahoma supreme court recommended the removal of lincoln county district judge tracy soderstrom in a court filing tuesday following an investigation by the state's council on judicial complaints soderstrom who had only been sworn in as a judge in january okay this is the thing right here and now i'm not trying to say it's okay for someone who's been on the bench for 20 years but that would be one of those things where you're like you've been doing it a little long maybe it's time to go girl just got the job she's like on her first day of the job you know what i'm saying <laughs> like no you're already doing that no okay let's keep going so it says i've been caught on surveillance footage in june constantly playing with her phone during christian martzel's trial for the murder of a beaten two-year-old braxton danker when the toddler's mom danker took the stand as a key prosecution witness against martzel her boyfriend soders from texted can i please scream liar liar state just couldn't accept that a mom could kill their kid so they went after the next person available one text said according to the complaint board's findings i mean and again this is the kind of stuff that as a judge it's like you can't be saying this right because in a minute when you hear what the guy got you're gonna be like uh-huh now do i think it's directly related to this i mean probably not obviously went to the jury but nonetheless it can throw everything off let's go on to the next thing a woman charged in the death of her two-year-old son has accepted a plea deal while her husband or her boyfriend i'm sorry waits for trial judith dinker was originally charged with first degree murder and she faced the death penalty but tuesday april 16th she took a plea deal now remember this dinker's charges have now been amended to enabling or permitting child abuse and she'll serve 25 years in prison Okay, now keep that number in mind when we get to what he got. Now, before we go on to the next clip, though, y'all, our next process is ready. Now, I'm not going to lie. The directions wanted me to do this at the very beginning, but because I'm trying to do multiple things at once, multitask, it's not my forte. Okay, it's not my forte. And so doing the video and doing this and doing this is all new territory for me. I was like, we're going to do this one thing at a time. We're going to do stuff stuff, and then we're going to do table stuff, and then stuff stuff, and then eat stuff. So that's why this is all going. But let's go ahead and add this rice. Here's some ASMR. Okay, so we've added the rice. We, of course, do not have a stir waiting. Again, I don't know proper stuff to use a lot of times, so feel free to drop it in the comment section. If you see me using weird stuff, because, like, I'll use, like, plastic on the thing that's, like, you know, the pan, and people are like, oh, my God, you can't do that. You probably can't, but, I mean, I just, I don't know these things, okay? Now, we're, what we're going to do next here is we're going to read another clip on the thing and see what more it says. We're going to let this boil for one second because we want it to hurry up. Okay, so let's read this other thing here. It says, Oklahoma mom takes plea deal in death of her two-year-old son. A woman charged in her death of her two-year-old son has accepted a plea deal while her boyfriend waits for trial. Judith Dinker was originally charged with first-degree murder and she faced the death penalty, the DP. But Tuesday, April 16th, she took a plea deal. Now, this is just kind of the header on here, but I wanted to throw that in there because, to you know, you know the DP was on the table. And so this, of course, is a big motivating factor to wanting to plea out. So 25 years to her is a great deal. But again, keep these numbers in mind when we get to this in a minute. Let's keep going. Okay, so we've got this. It's simmering. It's doing its thing. Oh, we need a timer. Oh, it's dripping. I got the wrong lid. Please hold. Oh, oh well, no wonder. That would have not been good. Okay. Timer. Boom. 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 Boom.
let's go ahead and listen to this next clip. This is from Law and Crime. It's going to start getting more into it. Now, in this clip right here, this is the mom on the stand. Pay attention to the judge and whatnot. Because remember, you can only imagine the testimony this young lady is probably giving. I use young lady lightly. Which was provided to the Oklahoma newspaper shows Judge Soderstrom on her cell phone at different points during the trial. At one point, it appears to show text messages on the phone screen. At another, a GIF is on the screen, and cameras also recorded her scrolling through Facebook. I mean, this is the thing. Can you imagine? And we're talking, it's a trial. Hours and hours and hours of this. I would be mortified at what people would have read, right? Because obviously, she's just no holds bar. You know what I'm saying? Like... I'm just gonna do whatever and put whatever on there. It doesn't really matter. Now, the next step that we're gonna do is make sure that this isn't gonna catch fire to our little humble abode here. We do need things to pick this up with, like towels, because it will get, here we go. These things right here, cute. We need to brown the meat. Now, here's the thing, this is gas. Do any of y'all cook with gas? That's what I have in the house. This is gonna take a minute. Let's get this going and then we'll watch another clip. And while I get this lighted, actually, let's watch that other clip. The district attorney for Lincoln County, Adam Panter, told the Oklahoman courthouse staff tipped him off to the video showing the judge on her phone. He called it shocking and disappointing since jurors are banned from using cell phones in the courtroom because they are expected to give their full time and attention to evidence presented. As they should be, right? Now, a couple of things with this club, and I also have to get some, the recipe calls for oil to put in here for the thing. I forgot the oil though. I found some butter. Every, butter makes everything good anyway, so we're gonna use that. Couple of things with the thing we just watched. Let me grab the butter. I already grabbed the butter. Here the butter. Blue bonnet. Okay, so when they were like staff, courthouse staff tipped them off. Now, here's the thing. You know what I immediately thought of and tell me what y'all think? I was like, oh, I wonder if they did that because they don't like her. You know what I'm saying? Now, one would hope that whether they liked her or not, the professional thing to do would be like, um, we need to talk, right? We saw this footage. It ain't cute. But it also makes you wonder, is she like an unlikable person that the staff was like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, we've got her on something. You know, we're going to really get her for this. You know what I'm saying? That just like popped into my mind with that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put just a big old piece of butter in here. I mean, why not? Let's let that mayo. So we got rice boiling. We're getting ready to do the meat. Using a spatula, press into an even layer. Cook undisturbed until brown. Okay, we can do this. Spatula, spatula. Okay, this is a spatula. This is a spatula. Okay, let's go on to the last clip of this and watch. Meanwhile, the attorney for the defendant in the case praised Judge Soderstrom, saying she did a great job. The jury found the defendant guilty of second-degree murder instead of the more serious charge of first-degree murder. Now, y'all know what really cooks my butter? Is that right there? Did y'all catch that? Remember how I kept saying, keep these numbers in mind, keep these numbers in mind? He was found, took it to trial. Jury found him guilty of the lesser crime. Y'all go ahead and buckle your seatbelts up, because when y'all find out what his sentence is, I'm telling you, there's a reason why his defense attorney is like, judge did great, judge did amazing, w love the judge, we don't see any problems with it, right? Let's keep going. Okay, now y'all, we're getting ready to brown the meat, <laughs> and um, what we're gonna do with that is there's a bit, we're gonna basically read through this article while the meat is browning, and uh, so I'm gonna get the meat going and then we're gonna read the article and so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so the name of the article that's gonna be up there, Time Served, and we're gonna read the whole thing. It's kind of a little bit lengthy, but it's, it's we need to, <laughs> okay? Because this is what I'm talking about when you're gonna be like, a oh, what? And you know, we're gonna get more in depth about this and when I talk about all my thoughts at the end, but since we're doing this new format where I kind of have a moment to kill, we're gonna talk about some of it now. Cause you know, I can't keep my mouth shut. This is the part about justice in a court system that blows my mind how two people can get very different sentences for you know and i get there's different circumstances and the crime like, in a, it's not the exact same thing you know what i'm saying but i mean come on okay it's just shocking so what the recipe wants us to do now is number one check on the rice to make sure i'm not killing that uh, we're gonna use the wooden thing rice is doing fine now what this wants us to do is to kind of well, you just work it, just work it. Work it, you better twerk it. You put your thing down and then reverse it. Okay, let's let that cook for a second. I'll get back to it. 
let's get into this article some. So like I said, it says, time served, recommended in child's death. A Lincoln County jury has found a murder defendant guilty of a lesser crime of second degree manslaughter and recommended time served as his punishment. The jury returned its verdict against Christian Tyler Martzel, 32, of Wilson after 1 a.m., following more than eight hours of deliberations. So know that they thought about this, but they didn't walk in and walk out, okay? Martzel was originally arrested on May 15, 2018, about 9 p.m. in the city of Jones for murder, according to an affidavit filed in Lincoln County District court on um, May 16th of that year. Uh, the DA, Adam Panter, prosecuted the case along with assistant DA, Ryan Stevenson. Marshall's defense attorneys were, and it goes into the names of them, we won't get all up in it here, but it says, while I'm disappointed about the conviction for a lesser charge, I do appreciate and respect the jury for their service, Panter said after the trial. We put on the best case I think we probably could have and hope that we did Braxton Dinker proud. My, at least now there is some finality to this case. Braxton was a two-year-old child who was taken to the hospital in Edmond the night of May 13th, 2018, who died the same evening, according to the affidavit. Even though Martzel was reportedly charged with murder originally, Panter said former DA Alan Grubb had reduced the charge to enabling child abuse. However, Panter said he amended it back to first-degree murder in January of this year. So there's that. Martzel had remained in the Lincoln County Jail since the time of his arrest. Panter confirmed. Judith Danker, the child's mother, was charged in the Lincoln County District Court with first-degree murder in May 2018. Panter said that charge was later reduced to enabling child abuse by former DA Alan Grubb. Court records show that April 16, 2019, appearing before Judge District Cindy Ashwood, Danker pleaded guilty to the amended charges as the result of a plea bargain, and the court found her guilty as charged. She was sentenced to 25 years in the Department of Corrections, assessed a $500 fine, and it goes on um, with some, you know, other things that go along with it. Okay, now let's just check on everything here and see how it's doing. Rice, where are we at? Are we burned? No, the rice is doing good. I'm actually kind of shocked. So you see, just based on that page, okay, they went back and forth with the charges, so on and so forth, you know, this charge, that charge. Now, like he said, yes, it's disappointing to see that he got the lesser charge, and you're going to be real disappointed when you hear a sentence, but they're like, there's at least some justice for the child, right? So often I feel like that doesn't happen, or it's obviously too late, and too late meaning the child is already is gone, right? You can't bring him back. So there's that. Now let's let this, well, let's let this meat keep simmering. It's all, it's doing good, but let's, well, let it keep doing its thing. And let's move on to the next thing. Okay, now this is the part that you need to buckle your seatbelts up because you're gonna be like, oh, what? So it says, in the end, Marcel was convicted of second degree manslaughter for Danker's 2018 death and was sentenced to four years with credit for time served. Let, let's pause there for a minute, y'all. Let that sink in, okay? Let that sink in. Four years time served. So so he obviously had been incarcerated, you know, doing it, waiting for trial, right? So he'd obviously been incarcerated for a while. He got time served, y'all. That man walked out of there. Now, here's the other thing. Y'all know, oh, I'm using this rice thing. I hope it don't matter. You can't take me nowhere. I swear. I mean, I guess that's cross-contamination. I'll use a new utensil for the rice thing. So, but, and again, there's more to the article, but I just want to talk about this for a second. Can you imagine what his girlfriend or former girlfriend, whatever, is in there thinking? She just signed up for 25 years. Now, again, you can't replicate that, right? She could have gone up there and they could have found her guilty. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, of the bigger charge, you know, because like the DP's on the table, right? So, this is the thing. A child lost his life, lived a miserable life leading up to that. No way for a child to live. This is all I have. I don't want to get all up in their stuff and go through it, so I'm just using the stuff that I brought. I know it's weird. I know, but it's just, you know, it's, it is what it is, okay? It is what it is. Oh, that rice is looking good. I love rice, y'all. It is so good. And this is getting nice and fluffy. In fact, let me show y'all. Look at that. So good. We're going to let that keep simmering, get a little bit drier. And let's check this before we finish the article real quick. Okay, we're about ready for the second part of the ingredients for this. So please hold while I get those. Okay, so y'all, the next thing that wants us to do is, okay, we did that. Now the thing went off with the rice, so we're going to turn the rice off because it's ready. It can just sit. Okay, so it wants us to, oh wait, we forgot to cook the green beans. Lord, they've just been sitting over here. Okay, it says, while the beef cooks, well, we forgot about that. Okay, while the beef cooks in a medium microwave, I'm add green beans, splash water, but but cover it, yep, yep, yep. Okay, so we're gonna do that and then come right back. We'll call that a splash. 
So the green beans are cooking. It wants us to stir in these little things here, these packet things that it sends for the meat. Now again, for me, because I don't like the hardcore taste of this, I just do what I, to taste basically. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. You make it how you want it. It's your dish, okay? You earned it, you deserve it. This is looking really good, y'all. Oh my gosh. So many beepy things. Oh my God. We get it, we know. I'm gonna do a little bit of this one. This is the sweet stuff. And again, I'm not looking for something super sweet, so I'm just gonna do what I, you know, a little bit. And that's it. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that or if they can zoom in on it, but it's coming together. And I'll get a few meals out of this. Mind you, I brought all three to cook. Okay, let's continue with the article here. It says, when questioned by the Council on Judicial Complaints, Soderstrom said her texting probably could have waited, you think? Saying she thought, oh, that's funny, move on, according to the filing. However, Chief Justice John Cain IV wrote the filing to remove her that her pattern of conduct demonstrates Soderstrom's gross neglect of duty, gross partiality, and lack of temperament to serve as a judge. The totality of the text messages gives the appearance the respondent believed the defendant was innocent and that she wanted a particular outcome in the case, Kane wrote. And that's the thing with this. When you're doing stuff like this and talking smack about it, it's a smack in Justice's face, right? Even if she thinks this, we're all human, right? We all have our thoughts. We're going to think certain things, okay? But it's like, you don't do this actively while this is going on, you know? I mean, there's witnesses and stuff that talk about the abuse and the things that they saw the guy doing, too. So it's not like he's just some innocent bystander, right? I mean, it took two to tango in this scenario from my perspective. I could be wrong. I wasn't there in the jury. I didn't hear all of that, right? Now, these green beans are cooked. Look at all that. <laughs> you know, that's going to be good. Now, let's just get rid of a little bit of that excess water. So we've done that. Now, it wants us to add the green beans. And we're just adding the green beans. I mean, we're literal adding the green beans. If y'all could see this kitchen. Oh, my God. Let's stir them in. It's so pretty. So fall looking. Let me show y'all. Y'all, it's fall. I'm just going to kind of bring it to the camera. Isn't that pretty, y'all? Doesn't that make you want to just cry? Let's read this last scene that kind of like tells us where everything's at right now. And then we're going to serve this up and talk about our final thoughts. Okay, so the last thing on the screen. Sodersom has been temporarily suspended from her position since she was exposed for being on her phone during the trial. This is a good thing. Her attorney told the Oklahoman that she takes these allegations very seriously and is requesting the entire record from counsel on judicial complaints so that she can respond appropriately. But in a statement to the local newspaper, DA Adam Pinker said, it is now well publicized that Judge Sodersom spent many hours of a murder trial involving the brutal beating death of a child glued to her cell phone on social media rather than paying attention to the evidence. I mean, this is true. But what is dot dot dot, in my opinion, even more obscene is that now we are aware from the allegations that Judge Soderstrom actively attempted to undermine the state's ability to successfully prosecute a child killer. That's it. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to let this finish cooking. I'm going to serve my little plate up over here and then we're going to talk about it. So, okay. Let's do final thoughts on this. Again, I'll start off with this. I'm not some moral superiority on who can use cell phones at what time and all that kind of stuff, right? I'm a human too. I use my phone at inappropriate times. I have the need to do that, or you know, I think I do. And so I do. I love the onion things, right? So, I mean, that's just how it is. Now, that being said, there's a time and a place for everything. So like I said, his attorney is probably completely happy, as he should be. He walked out of jail, y'all. On a charge that's like, I mean, imagine if he went to prison over that. He went to plays. She's going to have a very rough time herself. So, like the person said, it's like, look, it's been all over social media that this judge did this. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you quietly step down over. You know, where it's just like, you know, talking about the cops hot, the mom's a liar, you know, this, that, and the other. Again, what would be not funny but ironic is if they threw the case out and the guy had to go back again and they convicted him of the bigger charge, right? But here's the thing, you know, again, like I said, we're all human. And so I hold certain people up to different things in different situations, right? I don't expect a doctor to be on his phone while he's cutting some money open. You know what I'm saying? Certainly not texting about how sexy the patient is or something, right? So please hold, let me try this. My... God, y'all. Mm. Oh my God. That is so good, y'all. I mean, it's so good. Look at this with the onions and stuff on it. And the green beans, are, it's so fallish. I love it. Oh my God, let me take one more bite. 
I expect a judge to be paying attention, right? Look, think about all these trials that we've watched. You can tell if they're not paying attention. I mean, what does the victim's family, the people who, not the the, the mom, but the perpetrator, people who actually love this child, what do they think when they're sitting there watching this, right? And then for it to all come out later, you know, again, I'm very curious to watch her, this election coming up to see how that's going to go over. I think she'll end up stepping down or she'll be removed. Because again, it'd be one thing if you did one text, like you have your phone there, your your child or your spouse or something like, hey, what's going on? Hey, I, I'm at work or whatever. I'll, I'll hit you up on lunch break, something like that. But just to be like bored, talking to the bailiff, talking junk about people in the courtroom. I mean, come on. They were trying to figure out if like a juror was wearing a wig. I mean, bad stuff. It's like embarrassing for people. Please hold. So in this day and age where accountability is paramount, like with police and all these kind of people, the same thing goes to the judge. Now, you would think the video camera over her desk would have been that. She clearly just forgot about it or just didn't care, one or the other. But you heard her response, too. I'm kind of answering my question, where she was like, I thought it was kind of funny. I figured we could move on. And I'm like, uh, girl, no. This is over a two-year-old's horrific murder. You know, and you're texting during that? Really? Absolutely not. So anyways, that's a, let me know what y'all think in the comments. Now, obviously, let me know. Do you think it was fair? What happened? Do you think he should get another trial? What about with the mother's discrepancy in the case? All that kind of stuff. But what do you think should happen to the judge? You think she should be removed? You think she should step down? You think she should just be reprimanded? Are you going to cast your vote for her coming up? <laughs> Don't forget to check out HelloFresh. Thank you again to HelloFresh for sponsoring the video. I've loved working with them, with them for the last year or so. There's stuff down in the description below. And then thirdly, let me know if you like this format, if you feel like it needs to be tweaked some. I just, again, wanted to switch things up a little bit, and I figured this would be good. And so many people talk about how much fun they like, they enjoy the HelloFresh spot. So I was like, well, let's just do a cooking video. But again, you see I'm not a cook, right? So let me know what you think. We'll go from there. And we might do another one. Now, look, Roscoe's not here, so let's do this. Drop some sofas in there so he knows he's thinking about it. We're thinking about him. But then drop something cooking related in there to send me, you know, prayers and thoughts that I can learn how to cook better. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to be cleaning the kitchen up. Y'all converse amongst yourselves in the comment section. And until we meet down in the comment section to hang out on those little sofas and the little spatulas, whatever you drop down there, I'll see y'all there.